Why, hello guys. If you see my hand right now, it's because I, I don't have the money to afford a camera van. So this is the best I can do. But I wanna show you what's in front of me right now. And it's the epitome of all epitome. Just so you understand about my tapes, because I know you haven't heard from me for a while. And I know you cannot see my face right now as much as I would love for you to see my face. But I wanna show you this machine and I'll tell you why I love this machine. This is the machine that I will be using to archive my entire collection. Uh, the, the As far as the converter goes, that's the machine right there, the TX7030. But this is the machine that will be making all of the recordings. Because if I zoom in right here, Direct Stream Digital, DSD, baby. That's right. <laughs> so basically, what we have here is what was called the Gen X line of converters. This is a Gen X 9048. And I know some people might be very familiar with it. And they may hate looking at this. They may despise this machine. But I'm here to tell you that this machine is actually one of the greatest converters ever placed as far, uh, unless you get the faulty ones that have the high pitch problem on the DSD, this is one of the greatest converters that were ever used in a DSD configuration. And the reason I say this and why I love it, not only for the converters, but because for the fact that you don't have to use a computer at all. This does not involve a computer because I don't have a fast computer system. I don't have Pro Tools. I don't want to mess around with a computer. This right here was actually made in 99, right after they were starting to move into the digital DAW systems from tape. So it was right around that time period where we were going from analog to digital. And we said, we're going to build these units that actually look like analog boards, which would never be made today. This looks really small when you first start looking at it. Let me see if I can zoom out even more. No, I can't. That's the next update. I haven't updated my phone yet. Basically, if you look at this right here, it looks really small. But there's actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 48 channels of DSD or PCM at 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. Now, this particular unit right here of the, the uh, Gen X9048 is the last unit that was made by the company, which is sort of bittersweet for me. Because I feel like they were on the verge of something so incredible. And if only they could figure out their finances, they would have been able to keep their company afloat. But they sort of abandoned their products. It was a lawsuit. It was a terrible thing. People went into hiding. There was all rumors uh, if he was ever coming back, the owner and... Uh, but that's why people hate this. Not because it's a bad machine, but professionals can't use this anymore because there will be no support, no updates for it. If it breaks down, it can't be repaired. You have to repair it yourself. And so people hate this machine. They hate the Gen X line. This right here is so well built. This was a $20,000 at least machine when it debuted in 99. $20,000 you're looking at right here. And you can find this for, I mean, it's pretty sad, under $1,000 on eBay, 500 if you're lucky. I basically spent $200 on this, and then I spent $1,000 on this right here because I said I wanted DSD. And I love these converters way more than what you'll find in the TAC, the Tascams, and then the uh, Korgs. This DSD in here... This DSD in here runs off of these two drives right here. You can put solid state drives into here. Now, mine didn't come with the key, so I have to figure out what I'm going to do to get into here. But I want to give you a tour around this beauty. I mean, just so you understand the size of this thing. This is my hand right here. Uh, this is 50 pound unit. This is huge. This is just huge. I mean, this is the coffee table right here, as you can see the whole coffee table. Now let me go around this unit and you can see just how unbelievable this is. The build quality on this, this is a SCSI, as you can see, the old connectors that they used to use. And it connects to a computer, made in the USA, look at that. 
This is not a focus right, folks. This is not made in China or Taiwan or wherever it is. This was made five years after NAFTA was passed. We were still on the verge of American manufacturing, and this was the pinnacle of DAW systems. I mean, it's very well built. This was 20 grand. I, I mean, it just shows you how fast technology can depreciate when a company screws up. Depreciation value on this, oh my God, 20,000 to uh, 1,000 to 500 dollars in less than 15 years. I just find the story of these machines just incredible. And they look incredible too. Now, if you get the Gen X, and the reason I'm posting this on here on YouTube, by the way, is to give you both an update that I'm still planning on archiving my tapes and I'm pushing forward with that, but also to just show you that um, there's not a lot of videos on these machines because it's not that they're sleepers, it's that there's so few out there because so few were really made. I mean, because these were $20,000 machines, a lot of them were put out on loan. They didn't have to manufacture a lot. So when these show up, they're, they may be cheap because nobody wants them, but they're so rare to begin with. They're not sleepers though. People know about them, it's just they don't exist. So when I saw this come up on eBay, I said, I have to buy it. I don't care. Because I said, if I, if I don't buy this, I'm never going to find it again. And there's quirks. There's quirks on this. But man, f this is a great unit. This is how I wish they still made DAWs today. And how I wish they still made interfaces today. And the way the buttons are laid out on this interface, you've got buttons, analog buttons, like mimicking one of the old tape machines. Stop, cue, cut. And that's how they did this. They really did this to make it all a compartmentalized uh, unit, something that wouldn't have to be hooked up to a computer. Uh, you can use this in software since this is the 9048 and not the 9000. You don't have to um, use this mixer, but you can get this um, remote control and you don't have to use a computer at all. And that's what I just so love about this. So that's it. That's all I wanted to show was this hunk of beauty because I noticed on YouTube, there really isn't much out there. This particular unit, by the way, uh, was owned by the American Conservatory of Music in Chicago. And it was used to record symphonies there. And I bought it from when they shut down and basically um, everything was just on a flea market. They had an estate sale when they went out of business in the uh, late 90s. And this was one of their units right here. Um, and look at this, this is really cool when you zoom in. One more thing I wanna show you. You've got 16-bit, 20-bit, 24-bit, and then one more dot right there, direct stream digital. I mean, this is just a hunk of a unit. I mean, look at this. It's spotless, it's mint. I got to figure out how to open up those drives and put SSDs in there, but I just love this. I love Gen X products. I know there's haters out there, but you know what? They made very nice products, high quality products. The only reason why people abandoned them was because they stopped giving support for their products. But other than that, the build quality on these machines right here and on these mixers uh, is just incredible. It's way above anything you can buy from Focusrite. And that's why I waited and was patient until I found one. And I can't wait to listen to the converters and how they sound. And I can't wait for you guys to hear them. So that's it. That's all I wanted to uh, share with you. And uh, oh yes, the back of this. As you can see, it's real load. This is from Windows XP era. You've got the serial ports right there for a mouse. Anyways, Take it easy, folks. Look at that. I can't stop looking at it. It's just, it's, it's a sexy unit. It really is.